I'm Leo Walter for Kit Guru. This is John Martindale from our news team. Uh, John here has the HTC Vive Pre, which is the pre release version of the Vive VR headset, very similar to the proper release version that's coming any day now. John also has five, count them, Sapphire graphics cards totaling just over £2,000. John, what have we got? We've got pretty much everything from the uh, top of the R9 lineup. We've got everything running from a 390 right the way up to Fury X uh, with the water cooling setup, as you can see here. And um, they all perform pretty well. Uh, they're all within the recommended specifications for VR that both HTC and Oculus have put out. So we weren't expecting too many surprises when we put these through the tests, but they all came out pretty well. Now, what test were you actually using to see how well these graphics cards work with VR? VR obviously being brand new. Mm, it's a bit difficult actually, because normally if you look at any of KitGuru's graphics cards tests, we've got a whole ream of different benchmarks. Yep. We've got uh, you know stuff from FutureMark, and we've got uh, individual games with their own built-in benchmarks. As it stands, there's not a lot of commercial stuff to test right now, but Valve were kind enough to release their own performance benchmark recently, and yep. uh, that allowed us to get a, a rough idea of how well all of these would perform, and they all did pretty well. Now, fundamentally, when you're saying doing GTA 5, Tomb Raider, whichever it might be, mm -hmm. with a regular PC monitor, uh, we talk about resolution, image quality uh, are the two things, and then frame rate is your kind of the result of it. Mm -hmm. uh, in this instance, quite clearly, the uh, resolution is down to the two screens yeah. built in. So the resolution is uh, a known quantity and it's fixed. Yes. Image quality appears with the VR stuff we've seen so far to be dynamic. Uh, yeah. We're not quite certain what any setting is doing at any one time. It's a bit difficult. We Indeed. And the result is that the frame rates tend to be around that magic 90 frames per second. Yeah, that frame rate is king with VR because once you start getting below uh, what was recommended with the release hardware, it's 90 frames per second, it, things start to get a little uncomfortable. You can start to experience nausea um, as you get into much lower frame rates. So pretty much every manufacturer said we want to hit 90 frames per second with every game and experience. And that's basically what the uh, Steam VR test was trying to figure out is can the hardware hit 90 frames per second at a consistent basis. Okay, now I think we should show the nice people what the graphics cards Absolutely. look like. Obviously we have photos on KitGuru as per usual, but just to show we do have this enormous stack of hardware. So move the Vive headset to one side and we'll just bring them in one at a time to so announce them. We have the Fury X to start with, which is obviously the top of the line card that uh, uh, AMD has produced at the moment. And this is Sapphire's version of that. Um, it's a pretty reference design. There's nothing too exciting going on. But uh, yeah, it's the king of the hill. Uh, and that's priced at 500 pounds, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. It's, um, so next in line, we have Just the- Just the guard leader box. Next in line, we have the Fury, uh, which is the, this one's air-cooled though, so. Nitro coolers, that's the yeah. uh, new setup. Mm -hmm. And next we have the baby brother of the bunch, which is the Nano. Yes. Which is really quite a tiny little card. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the full fat chip, but slightly slower clock to reduce yeah. power and heat to keep mm -hmm. it down this tiny form factor. Yeah, it's, it's an impressive little piece. And then we have... And it's the more, slightly more mainstream, though still top end, it's the 390X. Right, again with the nitro cooler on it. Yep. And this is where we get into the realms of, you know, if you can tell that from that yeah, at a quick luck. glance, you're doing better than some of us yeah. younger in. And finally, we've got the R9 390. It's the baby of this bunch. Lovely. Still a decent card. And once again, Nitro Coolers, triple fans. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, photos, figures, and such like on Kit Guru. Mm -hmm. So you've been using these in a PC with a surprisingly low spec, to my mind, processor. It was a. Still slightly above uh, the recommended spec, but yep. yeah, it's a 4690K from, from the previous generation of uh, Intel chips. So Core i5 or Core i7? Core i5. Right. So fourth gen Core i5 powering yep. Humongo graphics cards because this is all about graphics yes. however the processor does play its part to a certain yeah, they are extent in, within the uh, valves test uh, one of the results that comes up is it tells you if at any point um, you're sort of CPU bottlenecked um, and there is there is a, a little bit of extra CPU overhead to consider with the hand tracking right. controllers and were you ever bottlenecked no not a thank goodness it sounds, yep. sounds absolutely painful does, yeah. right so uh, the curious position we're in is uh, 700 pound Headset with all the associated gubbins because you've got yeah. sensors and gig, uh, the box of stuff as you saw in our boxing is yeah. uh, huge. It's a lot of kit. Graphics card in the territory of £300 to £500 mm -hmm. and then your processor, frankly, the sweepings off the shop floor yeah, practically. It's, yeah, it's a competent PC, but yeah. taking the graphics card out of the equation, your PC was nothing special. No, it's, it's, it's what I've been working with at home for quite a while now, uh, a couple of years at this point. Um, 16 gigabyte of pretty generic mid-range RAM. Yep. Uh, that's about all you and need. And SSD, of course. Of course. Yes, yeah. indeed. And 
This thing about the 90 frames per second, uh, even with these Humongo graphics cards, you weren't seeing sort of 100, 110, 120 frames per second. You were seeing, or were you? Well, with the Fury X and uh, the Fury, we were hitting those at some point. Right. And it actually seemed that with this benchmark, Valve was almost aiming for 100 frames per second okay. where it could. Um, but uh, that wasn't always the case, especially with the lower end cars. I think the 390 struggled a little bit to hit that right. sort of threshold. But again, what the benchmark then does is adjust the fidelity rating, uh, sorry, adjust the uh, graphical fidelity of the right. scene so that you can maintain that really high frame. And rate. this fidelity rating, I've heard this a few times in conversation with you. Tell the nice people what this is about. So the fidelity rating is essentially a way for the benchmark to give you an idea of how well your card's performed. You know, traditionally, you might look at frame rate or eventual score of the graphics card. Mm. Uh, but fidelity Fidelity is, is the measure of how well you did in this benchmark because if your graphics card is capable of hitting that frames at that high frame rate without dropping the fidelity rating, then it's performed really well. Now, to my own, my way of thinking, perhaps stupidly, this is a little like that Windows Experience Index that we had, which you had Vista and then Windows 7. This appears for the time being to be the, the easy number to grab at. If yeah. it's got a certain fidelity rating, you're good. Now, yeah. For one thing, what numbers are we interested in then? If you see something quoting a fidelity rating, what sort of rating do you want? Well, uh, I think the, the bottom line is you want at least a six right. on the Valve benchmark, uh, but the Fury X was hitting up to a 9.3. So, right. you know, as with every graphics card benchmark, the better graphics card you have, yeah. chances are you're gonna get a better experience, but um, you do wanna be hitting the absolute minimum. And the, VR's, uh, the, the Steam VR benchmark does tell you that it's got a sliding scale of VR capable, right. and VR ready is really where you wanna be. And that again is a little like the business of when HD came in, you had the 720 and IMP and such yeah. like, and the full HD capable, full HD ready, all the mm -hmm. frankly lies and damn lies. Yeah, there's a big marketing thing behind it. I mean, mm. Oculus and uh, HTC have both put out bundles uh, which are, you know, Vive ready or Oculus ready yes. PCs. And I think which that's means where a lot of grunty it is. with HDMI and USB essentially. Pretty yeah, much, yeah. Okay. yeah. These graphics cards uh, vary in price from sort of £300 to £500. They all passed the test. They were all usable. They were all capable in this very early stage of VR. So are people safe to rush out and spend £300 or are they going to then run into a brick wall shortly when in fact they should have spent four or £500 or do we simply not know? I think really don't know until we've had a look at some of the commercial games as and when they release. But I think... Uh, for the most part, developers are going to be, who have been working on games for you know, over the last six mm. months to a year are going to have been aiming for this minimum, uh, I think the recommended spec was an R9 290. So right. anything that will run on that should run, uh, it should be fine in, in any sort and of And as you know, R9 290, R9 390 are very similar yeah, beasts. Very similar. Obviously your Fury is a different animal. Mm -hmm. uh, Nvidia has Pascal coming. Um, as we know, the idea that Pascal, the behind cards, won't be able to run this would be uh, a be crazy, fine. crazy miss. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen them yet, of course, but that would be, be insanity. Mm. <laughs> uh, right, so we're confident that any of these graphics cards do the job, but at 90 frames per second, and you don't want to dip at all below that, you really means you definitely, not definitely, you would probably be wise to push higher than the base spec and yeah. aim for the mid to upper range, but you don't necessarily need to go mental and spend a thousand pounds on a pair of graphics cards no. across our SLI. There is, I mean, there's there's a lot of talk about uh, the potential benefits of multi-card setups in VR because um, with the way that Liquid VR works and things, you can have um, uh, each graphics card powering a different display, which is oh, right, which okay. within the headset you do have two separate yep. displays. So there's going to be a lot more potential for multi-graphics card people. setups. Uh, having a, perhaps a, a better scaling than traditionally they right. had with um, SLI and Crossfire. But as it stands, a, a single high power graphics card like the ones we've got here will work absolutely fine. So just to round up, we've got the Vive Pre, we've got five Sapphire graphics cards, all of which handle the job. Uh, if you were spending the cash today, John, which card are you going to buy? Uh, I have a soft spot for the Nano, if right. I'm honest. It's, it's so compact, uh, the air cool is nice and quiet, um, and it does the job. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm Leo Ward for Kit Guru, John Martindale from the news side of things.